Today, I will present a new distortion correction approach for multi-contrast MRI. I have no financial interest to declare. Geometric distortion along the low bandwidth phase encode direction due to B0 inhomogeneity is a well-known problem in echoplanar imaging. For the lesser known case of multi-echo GRE, the same distortions occur, but in the readout direction instead, which is the low bandwidth direction here. In addition, it is common to encode consecutive echoes with opposite readout polarity or bipolar readouts, which is great for efficiency and CNR, but can double the voxel displacement or distortion between consecutive echoes. The animation toggles between the readout polarity, which is in the AP direction, to visualize the differential distortion between the echoes. For the ultra high resolution multi-echo flash ex vivo MRI application, we use low bandwidth to maximize the SNR. But this induces large distortions, especially near small air bubbles, which unfortunately are common in these preparations. While in vivo multi-echo MPH distortions are much less, but it is still common to at least observe a one voxel displacement in the temporal lobe and the sinuses. Current distortion correction methods mostly correct each contrast separately. In this work, we present a new multi-contrast correction method that takes into account all data jointly for correction. In addition, we present the results of applying the method to X ex vivo MRI of the human brain hemisphere for which the existing in vivo methods can become impractical due to long scan times. Mathematically, reverse gradient approaches can be generalized as solving a distortion field based least squares problem for each contrast separately. The linear distortion operator here can be estimated from a field map or the reverse gradient images themselves. Our proposed method, edge preserving intensity correction, in short, EPIC, jointly corrects multi-contrast images by constraining the distortion field-based data fidelity with an image-based regularization function that takes all the contrasts into account jointly. EPIC uses the shared edge prior regularization to achieve this, which was first proposed in diffusion MRI reconstruction literature. This function can be thought of as multiplying a quadratic smoothness constraint with a group sparsity-based line process prior with an additional assumption that edges are rare in MRI images. For intuitive understanding of what all the equations mean, let's assume we have two contrasts imaging the same anatomy. The gradient images find the same anatomical boundaries for both contrasts, as shown. This indicates that these gradient images are jointly sparse. Now let's consider a locally smooth region. The group sparsity of the gradient image in this region is low and the shared edge prior reduces to a quadratic smoothness function, which is great for reducing noise. In region with edges, the group sparsity is high and the regularization function starts vanishing to prevent smoothening of anatomical boundaries. The overall problem is solved by a conjugate gradient solver. For the first result, we correct EPI distortions in both fMRI time series data. We have data with four phase encoding directions and a field map, and we show results at a single time point. We assume that the time series images have the same anatomical edges and correct them jointly using EPIC. EPIC can accept all four phase encoding directions together and correct successfully as shown. EPIC can also correct the typical two-polarity reverse gradient scan. It uses both field map and image constraint and hence is better posed and more accurate than a pure field map based reverse gradient method and less blurry and anatomically more accurate than FSL's top up, which is a pure image based method. The EPIC 4 direction gave us the best result of all. Moving to multi-echo applications, I would first like to remind you that the multi-echo sequence encodes bipolar readouts. A reverse gradient scan will involve repeating this bipolar scan with opposite readout polarity. Instead of doing that, we choose to synthesize the reverse polarity scan from a single bipolar acquisition. The synthesis procedure involves first fitting T to star in the odd and even echoes separately, 
then estimating a multiplicative bias in our T2 star estimates at every voxel and using both to synthesize the reverse polarity echoes. At the end of the procedure, for every echo, we have both the readout polarities as shown in the figure for one of the echoes. Synthesizing saves us 50% of scan time because it removes the need to acquire the reverse polarity data altogether. The next result, we show a one millimeter resolution multi-echo MPRH dataset. The animation shown toggles across all four echoes. We can observe that the movement, that there is movement in the temporal lobe due to distortions. There is also a lot of fat signal here, but we are mainly interested in the water signal. EPIC stabilizes the temporal lobe and corrects the distortion, as well as you can see that it aligns all the echoes, so you don't see a lot of up and down movement. This can improve the relaxation parameter estimation from these echoes. We present the results of an ex vivo gorilla brain scan at 7 Tesla with 130 micron isotropic resolution. We zoom into the cerebellum where we see large distortions. The animation toggles between the root mean squared images calculated across echoes for the distorted and epic corrected data. EPIC successfully aligns the branches and corrects distortions as small as 195 microns. It also removes the blur in the leaves of the cerebellum. Here we did apply additional B1 plus correction that further improved the contrast. Next, we present results from some of our ex vivo human brain MRI experiments at 7 Tesla. For the first experiment, we spent double the time and acquired a full reverse gradient dataset at 150 micron isotropic resolution. This was done to compare FSL's top-up applied to reverse gradient data with EPIC applied to half of the total reverse gradient data. The RMS images show a region in the frontal lobe where we see blurring in the distorted input near the arrow due to B-naught inhomogeneity. The images firstly show that the correction from the synthesized reverse gradient based acquisition is comparable with the full reverse gradient based acquisition, thereby supporting the argument that we might not need to acquire twice the data. In addition, EPIC blurs less and preserves subtle microstructure better than FSL's top up for this data set. Last, we look at the single echo image of an ex vivo human visual cortex at 100 micron isotropic resolution. EPIC improves the SNR of the image without blurring subtle microstructures such as the stray of genari highlighted in, with the arrow. To analyze edge alignment across the echoes, we visualize the anatomical edges of the third and the fourth echo in green and red respectively. We observe that they are separated in the distorted data while they align and become yellow in the EPIC corrected data demonstrating successful distortion correction of as small as 100 micron displacement. To conclude, we presented a new multi-contrast distortion correction method, EPIC, that uses all the data from all the contrasts jointly with SNR and edge preserving benefits. One of the biggest strengths of this approach is its generalizability across contrast sequences, resolutions, and to both in vivo and ex vivo applications that were all demonstrated. Currently, we are testing EPIC in a cross-modality setup, such as an EPI plus MPRH correction. On that note, I would like to thank all our collaborators and acknowledge our funding sources. Thank you.